So this question comes from Nick S. Um, I work for a few schools as the IT guy and had a question about print servers. I always hear you talk about print servers and how they used to be very popular. A few videos ago you mentioned how print, printer servers used to be giant pieces of hardware, then they got smaller and smaller to the point where printers have their own nick and print servers are no longer necessary. Now while they aren't as needed in the Soho infrastructures, uh, are these still used on a larger scale network? One of our schools has about 25 of laser printers spread across classrooms and offices with about 50 staff members sharing them. I always just open up a range of IP addresses and assign static IPs to each printer, then add the printers by IP on each individual laptop, Ugh. depending on what classrooms they are in. Would it benefit me to have a print server? Note, there is no AD, Active Directory. I know that having an AD setup would offer better solutions, but we don't have the infrastructure or money to set up, support, and maintain Active Directory right now, maybe in the future. Hint, charter schools equals no money. So I've talked about uh, print servers a lot, in, uh, a lot, and usually I talk about them kind of in the past tense because they were very, 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 very necessary 14 years ago when I got into like the computers. Uh, but now, not so much. And basically the reason is, is because, you know, 14 years ago, uh, printers didn't directly connect to the network, therefore in order to share a printer on the network, you had to actually connect it to a computer uh, in order to be able to share the, the printer on the network so everybody in the office would be able to use it. Uh, what happened was they started making smaller and smaller uh, print servers all the way down to HP started making something called JetDirect cards. And what JetDirect cards were literally, it was like a print server on a card and you would actually slide that into an HP laser printer uh, and then that would give you network functionality. But nowadays, uh, basically, uh, printers are built with uh, are, are manufactured with print servers already built into them so that you can simply just connect them straight to the network and be able to share them out on the network. So they are not used as much as they used to be. It was like one of those things. Like back in the old days, if you're going to share a printer on the network, it was an absolute requirement. Now, not so much because you can go out and for $300, you can buy a uh, network attached printer and away you go. Well, the issue is, is when you go with the network attached printers, uh, you lose a lot of functionality that you get out of print servers. So print servers were really nice because these were full-fledged servers and so you could do things like you could set up securities and permissions for different users. So in Active Directory you could say the secretaries uh, are allowed to print in black and white and the CEOs are allowed to print in color. Or if you go into the, the Windows world specifically you could even do priorities. So you could say the CEO's print jobs are prioritized highest and the secretary's print jobs are prioritized lowest. So literally, if a secretary hit print and a CEO hit print at the same time, the CEO's print would actually come out first uh, because, um, because he had the higher priority. You can also do things like printer pooling and all kinds of amazing stuff. So the thing is, though, in this particular environment, you've got 50 users, 25 laser printers. Do you need a print server if you don't have Active Directory? So Active Directory makes life a lot easier. It gives you a lot of the security permissions, all of that kind of stuff. Um, it really is kind of, it's kind of up to you. Basically, the, the one thing that print servers do really, really well for you, especially in the Windows print server world, is that they uh, allow you to install the printer drivers onto the server for lots of different operating systems. And then when the Windows computer with a particular operating system accesses that print server, it automatically downloads the driver. So you could have Windows Vista drivers and Windows XP drivers and, and Windows 8 drivers. Uh, for the printer sitting on that Windows server. And when a Windows 8 uh, computer connects to the printer for the first time, not only will it connect, but it will also be able to download uh, those printer drivers. So that makes your, your life a lot easier. Now, what you have to look at really when it comes down to things like servers is, is what is your turnover? I mean, that's what it really comes down to, right? You know, the, the, more administ the more often you have to do administration on any of your computers or, or whatever, or your network, uh, the more you want it centralized. So if you're adding printers like every week, then the more centralized it is, the better. If you're adding printers or if you're adding printers to computers like once a month, then 
it doesn't really matter so much if you get what I'm saying. It really comes down to how often are you adding printers to the network and how often are you adding printers to individual computers. If you're not doing it so often, I wouldn't really worry about a print server. If you're doing a lot, it, it might be worthwhile. Now, the one thing that I will say is that as far as Active Directory is concerned, one thing you have to do have to remember in Windows World is that you don't actually have to use uh, Active Directory uh, when you're using Windows servers. You can have simple Windows file servers or Windows print servers without having the full Active Directory component. So this is one thing to think about. If you have the money to go out and buy a Windows server, you know, a 2012 server, a 2008 server, or a 2003 server, right, uh, you can actually connect uh, all of the laser printers through IP addresses and be, be able to share them out through that one server, and it gives you all the, the, the driver functionality and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it wouldn't give you the Active Directory security, obviously, but it does give you some functionality. Now, the one thing that I will tell you that's interesting when this guy says, hint, charter skills equals no money, is one thing that you should look at is what programs Microsoft offers for uh, nonprofit or educational institutions, uh, because I know that they actually have a lot of programs out there to bring the price down, like, ridiculously low. Like, uh, when I dealt with nonprofit organizations, again, one of the reasons why I tell you guys, if you need experience, go work for a nonprofit or go volunteer for a nonprofit is although they have no money, they get lots of free stuff. So they would get things like just like 50 free client access licenses for their Active Directory server just because Microsoft wanted to be nice to them. So one of the things that I would say is, I, I don't know who specifically you contact, but do some research and contact Microsoft because they do have like a, a charitable or nonprofit arm and an education arm. And you might be surprised how inexpensively uh, you can actually pick up things like server licenses and, and, and client access licenses and all that kind of stuff. You you really may be shocked. Like they may either a either you mean they're may either a give them to you or they may bring the price down to the point where it's it's really chump change. The other thing for you to think about, and this is one thing people don't think about a lot, right, is that you can go out and you can buy server licenses uh, for old versions of server, right? So, you know, they've been creating Windows Server now for a long time, uh, Windows NT4. Theoretically, there's a Windows NT 3.51. I never personally saw it, but theoretically exists. But, you know, there's NT4, there's uh, there's 2000, there's 2003, there's 2008, there's 2008 R2, uh, there's 2012, and there's 2012 R2. So one of the things you can think about is if you want to build your own Windows Server, and you're going to do it in a real corporate or, you know, real world, real enterprise world. So you can't go out and get a pirated piece of crap, right? You're not going to do pirated, right? Well, one way uh, you can get an inexpensive server is simply buy an older version of the operating system license, right? Like no real enterprise uh, wants to be installing Windows Server 2008 right now, right? 2008 is now six years old. So if you're going to be deploying Windows servers, you're going to be deploying Server 2012 or 2012 R2. Well, the thing is, you can actually go out and you can still buy the real licenses for Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2 for a tremendous discount. Instead of paying $600 for a server license, you may pay $150 or $200. Now, you know, depending on what you're doing, um, it may or may not be good for you. Again, if you want all the latest and greatest things with Windows Server, you know, storage spaces and the latest type Hyper-V, obviously you don't want to buy a Windows Server two, uh, 2008 server operating system. But if all you need is print server operations, if all you need is, um, is uh, you know, file services and that kind of stuff, basically you can get all of that in a Windows Server for a fraction of the cost simply, again, by, like I say, going out and buying a 2008 version of the operating system. So you buy the, the 2008 version of the operating system, you install that onto whatever box you have uh, available to you, and away you go. Not, not only that, but one thing to think about, too, is those client access licenses are also still floating out there. So one, if you're going for an inexpensive setup that might help you out, is you go out and you buy a 2008 uh, operating system license, and then you go out and you buy 2008 client access licenses. And again, for a fraction of the cost, these are all completely legal. They're legal. They're just old. Um, and it may give you all the functionality you want. That is one of those things I would have you think about. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Print servers are great. I, I mean, I love print servers. Um, 
you know, even like when I had my, uh, my, my, my business clients, uh, even though they had network printers, so every, everybody, even when I was doing consulting, you know, everybody had network printers then, um, I would still connect the network printers back to the main server and then actually share the printers out through the main server. So basically using that main server as a print server. Again, just because it made my life easier, it centralized the security, um, you know, centralized the drivers, it centralized a lot of stuff. So I found it really good. So print servers, I give you total thumbs up. Definitely they're a great thing, especially Windows print servers. Whether you do it, you know, with your budget and all that. I mean, from your environment, it doesn't sound really like again what pr what print servers are really good for is simplifying the deployment of printers so if you need to deploy printers to computers on a regular basis then it is a good idea to simplify that process if you don't need if you don't deploy printers to computers on a regular basis then you don't really need to simplify the process cuz you really don't do it that much that makes any sense. So those, those are my thoughts. But, but definitely, if you're with the charter schools, contact Microsoft and see what they have to say about uh, the different prices for licenses and things. Because you would be surprised. A lot of nonprofits out there and a lot of educational institutions, they think they can't have the latest and greatest because they don't have enough money. And then what they find out is, again, these major corporations, you know, you know what I'm saying? They, they, just, they just hand you all this stuff for, uh, for, for pennies, really.